Blue Belt, Strike 2, Chapter 1, Section 1, Lesson 1, Slice 1. What are we going to do? Shadow Hooks. Have you heard of them? Yep. We did reference them last strike. They're unbelievable. There was one class where we referenced that we were going to show you the Shadow Hooks in Lessons to Come, and today's the day. Demonstrate. Let's just do it. <laughs> I'm not going to understand that for sure. Check it out from the back angle. Boom, well, you know goes to untangle. Go. If you're wondering why I have black tape on my feet, wonder no more. <laughs> I'm sure there's like a lot of feet are moving around down there, but with the black tape, hopefully you can identify the shadows, because shadows are black. Now, here's the deal. Shadow hooks are primarily designed to prevent a squirmy, skilled bottom opponent from untangling your hooks. Okay? We learn the super hooks, and the super hooks are very valuable against someone who's trying to push you this way, smash, he rolls you the other way, boom, other way, boom. Tuck and shoot, high hooks, emergency hooks, we have all that. Now, if you have your hooks in, and they are intelligent on the bottom, and they feel the hooks, they're not going to try to roll you off crazy, they're going to try to untangle your hooks. And when they do, we shadow them. We shadow them. Okay? So once again, if he don't uses the elbow skate technique, yeah. right? He breaks the combatants, which is what? To brace the knee, lift one foot up, like real quick, and I want to find his heel right here. Right? He, do. he don't's goal is to bring that foot to push my opposite foot out and lay his leg flat. That is the goal. Go back. Now, when I have my hooks in, as I feel he don't lift this hook, two things happen, freeze. One, I take the desired foot that he wants to kick, this outside foot here, this guy, I take him and I hide it up. I kind of tuck it in close to his butt right here. The other foot, okay, is gonna shield and shadow his top leg, look. Because if I don't have a shadow, if it didn't exist, he would eventually find my foot and start peeling it out. Okay? So when he don't lift the leg up, I shadow and I follow. I shadow and I tuck. It's called shadow and tuck. Shadow and tuck. So he can't find my foot. Now, what's he gonna do now? Ideally, he don't want me to stay in this, in this foot position so that he can lift, switch, and push out the other foot. Got it? So he's gonna switch, of course. Okay? When he switches, when he switches, watch. Shadow and tuck. Tuck, shadow, hold, switch again, shadow. So he's going to keep trying to find my foot, keep trying to find it a little bit, find it, find it. Keep pushing it straight down, he can't find it. He's going to switch quick, boom, follow, follow, follow. Wow. There's, you're kind of dropping your hip a little yes. bit. I feel like your leg is really right. reaching so far. Got it? The little hip drop is crucial. The effectiveness of the shadowing foot is based on how far that foot, the shadowing, remember the one that follows his hook remover, the effectiveness of the shadowing foot is based on how long that leg is, how deep that leg reaches. And what he don't point out is that my hip positioning determines the reach of that leg. So if I want to have an effective shadow, like for example right now, let's say this right here, where I'm not going to put any hip pressure. Watch this from the back. Okay? If I'm here, he don't start to bring this leg up and over, and I try to follow it. Look, this is as far as I can go, because I'm on my knee, but watch this. Do you see from back there how far I was able to push Elon's foot across? How far my shadowing leg could push his leg across, okay? And that's all because of the hip comes down. So if you drop your hips, your leg has greater reach. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, I don't have that long of legs. My legs don't reach as deep as Henner's or Hidon's. So we gotta talk a little bit about when you would use this technique. When do you use the shadow hooks? And the answer is, if the person, if your legs are so short, or your opponent's body is so big, that your legs literally don't reach even past their butt, like that's as far as they go, then there won't be much shadowing going on because your feet hardly reach under their body. But what's interesting is, if you're mounted on someone who is that big to where your legs have very limited reach, what type of escape are they most likely to use? Just throw you off. 
why would someone who's that much bigger than you do elbow escape, hook removal, technique, fish hook, heel drag? They don't need it. They're just going to bench press you. And when they do, you use the super hooks. You hook onto their butt on the backside, you hold the neck, and you freaking, you put your hand out and you mean business. So when are you going to use the sh shadow hooks? When are you going to use the shadow hooks more likely? Well, everyone's going to need it with somebody. Correct. Everyone needs the shadow hooks with someone. Fair deal. You'll work on someone someday, so therefore you have to learn it. When I use it most. When do I use the shadow hooks most? Number one, he don't. Quite I'm on him, he's going to untangle my hooks. Number two, amongst the students here, I use them against the squirmier guys. I call them squirmier guys. Scott, the guys that basically realize that they can't push me off because my super hook, my super hooks are so good. And those squirmier students and, and training partners, what do they do? They try to untangle my legs. Think about it. If you're fighting someone who's 100 pounds heavier than you, are they likely to untangle your legs? No. They're just going to throw you off. So it's all about lateral base. Whereas if you're fighting someone who's your size or even smaller, you better have good shadow hooks if they're a skilled opponent. Otherwise, they're going to untangle your hooks. So moral of the story, these might even be hard to practice if your training partner is much bigger. Okay? So, find someone your size, smaller, someone who at least, the good indicator of whether the shadow hooks are possible is if you can cross your feet behind their butt. I think that's a good indicator. You don't even yeah. want to try to beat Even though I have the shadow tape on, Hidon is now going to do the shadowing. So, Mike, I'm the, I'm the bad guy, Hidon's a good guy. So, cross your feet right there. Look, Hidon, if your feet can cross, if your feet can cross under their legs, essentially, you can do the shadow hooks. Okay? That's a good indicator. If they can't reach each other, then no deal. So, now... He does there, he does low, possibly get a neck hook here. Perfect. So as I lift up and I come over, he's already tucking and blocking. Talk about that push flexion there. You know, you're, you're so the my foot right now wants to stay flex, dorsi flex. If I'm too much like this, then my heel right. is not as close as it can be to Hanner's thigh right here. Right. So plus. I want my foot as close to him as possible, and I want my foot to have more of a platform to yeah, block his leg. Like Look at this. While he don't have his toes flexed back towards his knee, okay, with this angle here, his foot is much flatter like a, like a wall. It's great. And his heel is very close like you talked about. So instead of toes straight, mm -hmm. toes are straight, you can't effectively block their heel. So this is wrong to have a straight foot. You want it back. He don't call it dorsiflexion. Okay, so your toes flex back and your heel is the prominent push here. And then this hip drives down and reaches deep. Yeah, it's incredible how far. Look how far he's reaching with his foot, holding my foot off. And now I'm going to switch. Watch. As I begin to alleviate, he already tucks and blocks. Now, notice how I haven't even found his other foot yet. I haven't even gone there. But Hedon is already in shadow hook ready position. So that when my foot comes down, what's this foot looking for? It's looking for Hedon's bottom foot. So Hedon tucks that bottom foot, and he's waiting for me to land and just follows it. You pretty much already know. Once they stop trying, once Henner stops... With this foot right here, I already go ahead and try it a little more. Once I feel him give up, pull your foot out. I can feel the other one lift. Hey, I get a good point. What's that similar to? That's similar to mount hooks, super hooks. If he don't hear my neck, if he don't hear on the super hooks, and I'm trying to throw him this way, and I'm bridging, I'm going crazy. When you relax, switch the hooks. So he don't not switching his hooks on my switch. He don't is switching his hooks on my relaxation from the initial attempt. Which is the beginning of the switch kind of. Essentially, yeah, if you think that deep, right? Now, real quick, what's going through my mind right now? When I'm like this and my hooks are in, all I care is that when he lifts one leg, freeze. I hide the opposite. Wow, it's so major. So, whatever, whatever, he lifts the foot, I'm hiding the opposite. So as I come down, his shadowing leg goes, and th this hip over here, he don't dropping a little bit more so that this foot is weightless. That's how your knee is so weightless, you know what I mean? This leg, this knee is almost weightless. You can move your leg so freely. They have to understand that. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, you can just do it on this side. Let's switch sides. Mm -hmm. Boom. Look at this. So from right here, okay, for example, he don't hips are so heavy on me that his knee is floating, which means his shadow has much greater reach potential. His knee is back, not forward. Not here. It's way back, and he's pushing my foot across. And he just follows my foot wherever it goes. Now, as this foot lifts up, he don't already switching everything. Tuck, and look at his hip switch too. And this knee, this foot right here, that tucks, the mm. heel tucks. Your knee also has to move way forward. I go forward and up, so what? my heel is as close to his butt as possible. Yes. So it's more hidden. So I mean that's very similar to super hooks. When he don't tuck in my neck, boom, super hook stand. And look, kickstand, other side kickstand, boom. 
That's a standard procedure to always have your foot tucked under the butt right there. Yeah, it's so critical. They're called the shadow hooks. What else? So you use them if your hooks are in. Oh, I want to talk about the grapevines a little bit. Now, this might go against everything we've taught you up until now. <laughs> Here's what we've done. We've taught you that grapevines from the mouth, grapevines, are not reliable mouth control devices. Why did we say that initially? Why are grapevines bad? Anytime you grapevine your legs, if, if Henry's grapevining his toes are pointing out so aggressively, and I extend my leg, they might continue to pop out. And then you can easily come under. So what do we teach him instead? Feet together. Oh. So if I straighten my legs for whatever reason, his legs, his hooks continue. Now, um, please forgive us for now changing the meaning and potential of the grapevines. But it's for your own benefit. If you have a grapevine in, there is a value. By me having my toes pointed out, I can more sensitively feel Hedon's desire to untangle. Freeze. Go back. Look right there. You're going to see my toes are going to get rubbed by Hedon's shin. Click. You guys see that? Go back. I felt him remove the hook. As soon as I feel that, go ahead. Come over to the front. What does that, what does that mean? When Hedon untangles this foot and I feel it straighten out, it means that I know that this foot wants to do what? Come up come across and kick out my opposite leg and start to flatten his leg. So grapevines are okay. We, now, let's categorize them. Grapevines are only okay if they exist as sensors. And you know how you can tell? Not as controlling devices. So I don't put a grapevine in to hold my mouth against Hedon's will and stay there forever. I just put it in, but as soon as Hedon's leg starts to elevate in the sky, I accept that the grapevine is not going to hold him there. It's just going to tell the other foot, hey, brother, start tucking under the butt. And you, get ready to shadow on the way over. And it's so incredible. They're sensors, nothing more. And your pressure right now tells me that you really are using them only as sensors. I'm not doing this. this. Yes. Yay. So it's so light that when I'm very able, very easily able to straighten my leg. Henner's letting me straighten the leg. So I'm not fighting his extension. I just want to know what's going on. I just want to know what's going on. Now, if I was here, let's say, and I have my grapevine, and he don't right now, did an instantaneous super roll that way. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Just bridge and roll right now. Boom! I shoot my foot to the sky. So even though I was in grapevine sensory mode, even though I was in grapevine sensory mode, when he don't went to roll me berserk, not untangle the hooks, but to roll me, my, my grapevine, or my, my little sensor, okay, a sensory grapevine, not a control grapevine, but my sensor went to a super hook, boom! In other words, I don't keep the grapevine for the control. Wow. I think we just need to do a couple more shadows just so you can watch a little bit more. Yeah. Just freestyle. And how fast should they go? You should go very slow. The key is if the bottom person can feel the mistakes of the top person. So if I go like this, if I lift up one foot, and Henner hides the wrong one. Stop. Show me why this is wrong. I'm like, hey, hide this foot right here. Oh. I don't have, yeah, it's good. I don't have to even push it. I just show them how that foot should not be exposed. The most common mistake, yes. And the most, this right here, don't move. Don't move, Henner, don't move. And look at, look. switch your legs, switch them. He don't say switch my leg, but watch what else switches. The hips, everything turns if you're riding a bike. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. Right here, right here. <laughs> Look, so come over right here. So I feel like I shadow him. I'm telling you, he don't called it early on. He don't called it. The most common mistake is the, this toe right here, aside from the switching the hips at the right time, is this toe being straight instead of back. In other words, lead with the heel. Lead with the heel. Don't lead with the toes. Sometimes if you have bigger thighs, you won't be able to get your heel so close to your opponent, and my leg, watch, will be able to get inside of here and possibly do this. Mm. We'll address that later. <laughs> yeah, true that. But either way, you still get the right hip movement and the right leg switch. So for this drill, all we want to see, hands out, both, start with both hooks in, even a little bit of grapevine. Now, if the person was trying to roll you berserk, shoot your toes up to the sky, 
Smash the hips and super hooks all the way. Those still stand valid 100%. But as soon as you see that your opponent is elbow escape happy, that they've surrendered their attempts to roll and they now want to untangle the hooks. Tell me. And the yes. Their hands are down. They start shoving your knees if possibly. Like here, going here. Yes. Watch. It's all about up and in. As soon as I see Hino trying to untangle, my toes can feel. I just felt him. I just felt him back there. Go back. Do that again. As soon as he comes out with my toes touch, I feel it. Everyone goes to their, their base ready position, their combat ready position. Hit all soldiers report. So my feet have missions. As soon as I feel he try to untangle one hook, my feet have missions. Why are we doing this? Why are we ready to hook removal? Because once the hooks get removed, their escape potential goes up. Because once your hooks are removed, you don't have super hooks anymore. So if he goes to roll you, you don't have your roll prevention. Although technically when he goes to roll you, you could put them back in. Still, they're out and they can start their elbow escape. In lesson number two of the Blue Belt Stripe One course, the last course, we discussed the elbow escape prevention strategies. Do you remember? We had the wrist scoop, we had the elbow scoop, we had the choke scoop, we had several things that we could use once the hooks were removed. In other words, they untangle the foot and you're there. What can you do to stop the elbow escape at that point? And you can resort to those strategies if your hooks are removed, if your shadows fail, if the shadows fail, which they will, by the way, several times before you perfect them. You can resort to the other strategies. But just know that, hey, why use your backup weapon, right? Don't resort to the backup weapon unless the primary fails. Perfect your effectiveness with your primary weapon. And in this situation, in mount control, the primary weapon for hook removal and elbow escape prevention is the shadow hook strategy. If you can use that to prevent the hook removal, you'll never have to use those other tactics. Wow. One more time. He don't mount on me, I'm gonna be the bad guy once. He don't is now shadowing. I'm gonna try to untangle his hooks. Watch how slow we're gonna go. This is what you're gonna do. Both hooks here, please. You might even go ahead and just do the elbow escape once. Just put your foot up mm. and find my angle and push it down. Good. Do that again. Good, good. Do that again. So now, same thing. He don't's toes feel the center over here. Boom. He tucks and he reaches with that hip. Follow? Three or four seconds. Why three or four seconds? Because that's how long they're gonna try to get in. I can't get in right now. My foot has no access to, my, to, the, to the desired foot of Hidon's that I would like to push out. I can't reach it. Why can't you reach it? Because your shadow. Because I'm pushing your foot beyond yes. mine. I can't even, if this foot wasn't here, I might be able to come in and get it. But this foot follows it out. That's why the shadow hook strategy works so well, boys and girls, is because I can't get to the foot that I want. As I think about switching, he switches and he reaches. Look how Hidon's whole body shifts. Follow, follow, follow. He's very heavy on me. I feel all of Hidon's weight right now. Okay? Slow, watch on the lift. Three seconds, he switches his lips, and he follows. This is how slow we're gonna go. Follow, follow, follow. Look, lift, leave the heel. Follow, follow, follow. This time you're gonna switch, but don't tuck the foot that well. Follow, but don't tuck. Watch. Switch, but keep this foot out of the way. Look, if you don't, there's a shadow, but this foot remains away from home. Do we see the danger, boys and girls? I can, I can reach his foot. If it's tucked under my butt, I can't reach it. So just as important as the shadow is the tuck of the other foot. Wow. So we'll go side to side, what, like 10 times? Let's do it, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then reverse rolls. How fast should you go? Really slow. It's almost better to do five side to side in super slow motion than 10 times going too fast. No matter what you do, do it slow. It's gonna take a lot of getting used to. What ends up happening is your feet kind of develop little brains of their own. Each foot has its own little brain. And uh, eventually, you do this enough times, when someone goes to untangle the hook, as soon as you feel, your toes feel the pop, your toes feel the hook go to the sky, everything happens, everything's ready, without conscious thought. It's incredible. Take your toes up a oh, this, See this one right here? That's longer. <laughs> That's what the brain is. <laughs> you don't make fun of me because my middle toe or this toe is longer than the other. And the question is, is that the way it's supposed to be or not? I had a podiatrist student and the podiatrist told me it's supposed to be longer. He don't is short or equal or equal. He has pretty good base though. So who knows? Guys, try it. Shadow hook side to side. Both hands out. Both hooks in. Have fun. We'll catch you in the next slice.